well, there's this girl. <laughs> How can I forget this? Wow. Hello, everyone. Welcome to That Triathlon Life podcast. I'm Paula Findlay. I'm Eric Lagerstrom. I'm Nick. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and I'm Nick Goldston with a little voice crack. I, you know, I have the power to edit that out, but I might not. Yeah, it's kind of you don't have the power to edit it out of the okay. video. <laughs> Shoot. Okay. Okay. Um, we're here in Oceanside post race, recording um, both a little bit of the vlog and the podcast at the same time here in the van before we all split up. And Nick and I go to Hawaii to shoot a film, and Paula goes to Flagstaff. Thankfully, my mom is here and she's going to help with the drive, help with Flynn and has been insanely helpful all week in general. So, yeah, um, yeah, we're doing this from the van because it's the last time we're kind of all in person together for the next couple of weeks. Um, a little fresh post race. It's not like the most fun time to talk about race recaps when things didn't go well, but I'm putting on a smile <laughs> and we're going to do our best. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. what day did we show up? <laughs> I don't even remember now. Was Wednesday. it Wednesday? All right, that is the end of Santa Monica mini camp, and we are heading to Oceanside. Whole fam. We're gonna meet your grandma. She's gonna take care of you while we do work. Okay. We Wednesday. showed up Wednesday afternoon, um, and the nice thing about Oceanside is is that Oceanside is just great. Like that, the vibe here is great. We love the city. We love like the people and just the atmosphere and everything. And the weather is usually good. We did have some rain this time, and that uh, impacted a little bit of our of our bike riding. But for the most part, we were able to get in everything we wanted to do, ride our TT bikes on the beautiful bike path here, and kind of get into race mindset starting from day one. Yeah. So we there's not that much variety in terms of riding here, right? It seems like you um, guys and everyone kind of does the same ride. I think if you've got like four plus hours, you can go and get out a little bit and do some cool stuff. If you're just trying to do pre-race tune-ups, the, the bike path that goes right inland from the pier area where the race starts is just, it's easy, it's simple, you don't have to worry about cars and you just kind of get in the pre-race pickups and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. All right, we're two days out from the race. Uh, we're getting for going out on the course for a little ride, not a course. We're going on the bike path for a little ride. You've seen the bike path probably at this point. Uh, it's sprinkling. Seems like a real chance that this could be a very cold race. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we feel good, but... You never know. Cold. I scratched everything I said about the rain. The sun just came out. Coast storm vibe. It is sick. The light, bro. And then the next day, Thursday, when we the day after, we did the Thursday was probably the coolest thing that we have ever done as as TTL, as as a little company in the community that we've built. And that was um, we did a partnership uh, pop up concept pod recording hangout run with with On Paula's Run Shoe sponsor, and in um, we did it at a coffee shop that we've been to a lot of times down here, uh, communal coffee on was incredible and helped us buy the whole thing out and brought shoes for people to try on we had a run and a, it was just it was, was so cool it, we just all were kind of like blown away and talking about it after we got back and just how awesome it was to see how much everybody there felt like they were part of something they were and they were connected to us and connected to each other and that's exactly what we um, set out to do with ttl on on day one years ago so little bit, because I, I don't actually know the full story. How long have you guys known each other? How did that go? <laughs> <laughs> How did I forget this? <laughs> wow, I can't 
Did you plan this? Did you tell her to say this? Is that what happened here? It was nice also to have your mom here to kind of help with totally yeah. cooking and making sure everyone was happy all the time. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like that used to be my role, and and now I've kind of like shifted a little bit into also being part of the the community stuff. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Keeping us all in yeah. a good mood and keeping plus, Flynn entertained. Plus yeah. other commitments, yeah. less cooking. Grocery okay, shopping. so I would love to hear about the race from you guys and I think as awesome as it is to have great races and everyone wants to have a great race every time and of course going into a race you always envision that but that's not the reality and and mm -hmm. everyone loves a good war story I think but you guys have different days which one do someone you want to talk about just kind of the emotion more than like I don't know if we need the blow by blow but just maybe the mental state throughout is more interesting yeah I think so yeah, um, like I, like I, I felt pretty good. I felt like as I went to bed each night that I was like optimistic about having a good experience during the race. I had was like not really drawing any conclusions about where I would place, but I felt like my body and my head was in a good spot to like go out and go hard. I had a really great swim despite them canceling the ocean yeah. entry. There was something to do with the amount of waves that there were and the temperature of the water that they kind of decided to instead of do a beach start, they started the way that they historically have in the harbor and you just kind of like go towards the end of the harbor and come back um i was i really struggled to get off my new wetsuit in transition i i have like practiced it a few times but the ocean side run for people who haven't done it you run out of the water for like you do a full tour of transition it's in the pier so it's like long. your your wetsuit dries off a little bit during that run and it makes it a little bit harder to strip off and that like probably eight nine seconds of that cost me I was just off the back of the lead group and Ben Knutes at the front of that lead group going absolutely maximum effort to try to drop Jason West and Matt Mack, fast runners who were with him. And I just never could, I could never yeah. connect. And I basically dangled behind that lead pack for the first 10 miles, totally solo, um, but riding really good power. I was yeah. honestly like, the, I'm excited because like I felt really good on my bike for the first time in a long time where I didn't just feel like, oh, at any moment, my hip's gonna go out and I'm not gonna be able to ride and I'm gonna wanna quit like the sport entirely. And then around 10 miles, Sam Long Tram came by and I actually managed to get on that and stay with them for 10 miles, which again, I'm pretty excited about yeah, that. Yeah, that's great. That's they were great. going so hard. And right about the time that I actually got popped off of that, just due to some stupid cornering situation with an athlete in front of me, and I don't wanna blame people, but I couldn't reconnect after this like weird turn thing that happened. Um, they caught the lead group. So they were ultimately you faster have, yeah. than the lead group. Right. And I feel pretty confident if I hadn't messed up that wetsuit thing and I had a better T1, that I would have been able to hang in that lead pack for the whole race. Maybe done a little bit extra, a little bit less work, had a little bit faster run, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, but like I said, I didn't have a, an outcome necessarily in mind, but when there, I look at things like, oh, technically I can fix that. Technically I can fix that. Instead of like, man, I just need to redo all of my training because I am a bad athlete like mentally sharp and not overtrained or anything right now. And that combined with when we went to specialize in the wind tunnel testing and got those great bike fits, I just feel like for the first time in, in a while, I get on my bike and I'm not just like wanting to get Hating off of it, it because yeah. I just feel like so uncomfortable and weird. And, and so, so yeah, I'm just, I'm very encouraged by that. And I feel like with just another month or two, even of like riding that TT position and to putting in some good workouts there, the race fitness is going to come like the base is kind of there already but the sharpness that you need for a race of this speed where two seconds makes a difference that comes a little later in the season paula mm -hmm. um you know the the actual the way you placed was not bad at all but it was more about the way you felt on the day and uh, i know that you didn't really have expectations about this race and you were trying to keep it really low key but then you're out there and it's hard to separate yourself from who you know you are and what you know you can do. Mm -hmm. But did you feel good at at first? Did you feel no. zero? Like you right <laughs> off the bat? No, it's like really extremely difficult for me to debrief this less than 24 hours after we finished the race. Um, super sucks. But yeah, I came fifth overall, which means nothing. I mean, yeah, I would have loved to win. I would have loved to podium. But really, I just am mad about the, f the feelings I had and how I raced and how the race unfolded and finishing last year winning in Dean Wells second at world championships I felt like okay I'm like an athlete who's constantly going to be up there like the mental struggle just to get through the run and get to the finish line like was more than anything I've done I think in in the sport um, in terms of racing so yeah I don't know my body felt really bad right from the start and I basically like lost Holly's feet right at the start and I rode pretty well and pretty hard but towed along 
Chelsea and Kat and Tamara. And as soon as I saw them out of the water with me, I was like, okay, this is not going to be great. Um, but I still had belief that I could potentially like put a gap on them or at least a couple of them. To be honest, the pro men that were a bit slower for sure interfered with our race in an annoying way. And they didn't want to be passed. And when they were passed, they slotted right into our group and definitely created, you know, just like more bodies creates drafting or drag opportunities, even if it's within the legal distance for athletes that are behind and getting kind of strung out a bit. So I think that remove the males <laughs> pros from our group and it may have actually broken a bit and not come in all together to transition because I led 90% of the bike ride caught up to Holly who had a 90 second lead and then continued on at the front and so I was just like drilling it the whole time and towing everybody pretty much is how it felt um which is racing I mean it's fair but I just felt like with the power I was putting out and how I was riding last year I should have been able to like snap the elastic band a bit. I, my back started to get really sore, like three quarters of the way into the bike, not having a fun time, couldn't even imagine running a half marathon. And just like my negative emotions just like took over me and I was hating it and I wanted to stop. And it's happened to me a few times in races, but usually I'm not feeling that terrible. So I can kind of like find positives and get out of my funk if I'm not having a great time. But couldn't really yesterday and got off the bike and everything hurt like my feet hurt my legs hurt I felt like I was not cramping but tight everywhere and it I just was not flowing I was running like jogging pace for a lot of it and walking up the hills it was just like such a death march and the honestly the only reason I couldn't stop is because there were people cheering for me the entire course and like course. TTL signs and everything so there was not even like a good opportunity where I could sneak out you know <laughs> So I just like kept kept going and this course is particularly challenging when you're not having a good day. It just feels so long, like those big, big out and backs that never seem to end. Um, and then on the out and backs, you also see the people that are winning the race who are yeah. 3K ahead of you. So yeah, really not fun. Got to the finish line, insanely fast racing at the front of the women's race. Like even on a good day, I may not have been on the podium, but that's not what this was. That's not the reason I'm sad about it. It's more like, you start questioning, am I doing everything wrong? Am I not training properly? Is my bike fit not good? Like it just creates doubt and erases all confidence that I may have had from last year. So yeah, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't have raced and I still would have loved to come to Oceanside to do the cool activations we did. But from a racing standpoint, it was for me unproductive, um, potentially detrimental. I'm hoping that, I mean, you're just you're just not the only person that's listening to this that has gone through that terrible feeling and the consequences are much greater for you. But we still have those emotions as age groupers when yeah, things yeah. are going badly and you're just, you know, and maybe maybe it's not our job, but it's like, yeah, but I trained six months for this race. And every time I've gone out for a hard run, I'm visualizing this moment and it is so far away from what I have been visualizing, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. that yeah. hurts. It feels like you're 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 like experience loss a little right. bit. It's like this idea of what I thought this was going to be like is it's gone so and it's I'm never getting that. Anyway, that is my recap. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you, Paul. I know it's <laughs> it, your favorite. It's not your favorite thing to do to talk about it, but I think it's great to talk about it. Uh, it this sport is not all flowers and sunshine, yeah. as we know. That's yeah. why we love it. It's because it's got major ups and major downs. Yeah. Yeah, I know. They're like very different experiences. We can, ha we can have some in behind, you know, not on the podcast. Talks. Talks about this, I think, is is what. Great. Well, we what all, else do you have to say? We all need a little bit of. What, I mean, we, we just haven't personally, as a family, yeah, as a family talked three. about it, yeah. not in front of anyone else yet. You yeah, know, that's true because I was crying all day. We don't want to like sit here and like <laughs> actually vent the actual things. You yeah. know, I also was thinking yesterday, like as I was freaking crying in my bed after the race, that nothing else really in the world has made me cry in the last three years or so that's like, pretty good i never cry except for when i have a bad triathlon so like things are all right yeah that's yeah <laughs> as my mom says <laughs> a great life our worst problems are this bad in life. right yeah like okay the, i guess i really care about this yeah and life's not bad yeah that's right